Today, I'm going to talk to you about surrender. Now, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, you either love the word surrender or you hate the word surrender. Either way, we're going to talk about not only the reason why we should surrender our lives to the Lord, but we're actually going to talk about how we surrender our lives to the Lord. The verse for today is Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. As humans, you know, we want to live in our own strength. It's usually only after we have tried and tried and tried to fix something in our life or straighten something out in our life that we finally surrender it to the Lord, right? And that's the real battle. It's the battle between the spirit and the flesh. And the battle, unfortunately, is never ending. But we will wear ourselves out trying to surrender to the Lord if we don't do it the Lord's way. Listen, I want to learn how to surrender to the Lord through the power that the Lord gives you. It says, lean not on your own understanding, okay? So if we're leaning on our own human understanding, then we don't even know why we should surrender to God in the first place. In our humanness, we don't even know how to surrender to God. So that's why we are called to lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways to submit to him because he will make our path straight. And I'm bringing this message to you with experience in doing it both ways. I have tried in my human strength to submit to the Lord and I have tried in my human strength to make things happen. You know, for instance, I spent 12 years in the self-help market trying to transform myself into the best me that I could be. I attended seminars, right? I went through many courses and training programs. I actually believed that I was going to be the next internet millionaire in the small town that I live in. But you know what? That didn't happen. I wore myself out trying to transform myself and to make things happen in my life. But once I became saved and I realized that the power to transform lives is in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, as we come to know him as our very own personal Lord and Savior, he transforms us from the inside out. So the real, authentic, transformational work begins the day we get saved. You know, when we read and study his word, he is renewing our minds. One of the first verses that I ever memorized was Romans 12, 2, and it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, that's how we surrender to the Lord. We intentionally get to know him intimately and personally for ourselves. Listen, don't allow anyone to tell you who Jesus Christ is. Don't allow other people to transform your thinking. Allow the word of God to transform your thinking because he holds the key to true and authentic transformation. So if you want to submit to the Lord, you must know him. You must know him. I know it sounds simple, but people try to complicate spirituality in spiritual growth. It's not complicated, but it is sometimes difficult because we are called to prayerfully read God's word so that it changes us, so it transforms us from the inside out. We should always prayerfully read our Bibles. We must pray 
that God would give us spiritual eyes and ears to understand his word. We submit to God when we truly trust him. You know, think about your personal relationships with people. I mean, you don't automatically trust people, right? Or at least you shouldn't. You trust people when they prove themselves trustworthy. God is trustworthy. God is faithful. And when you get to know him personally for yourself, you're going to trust him. So surrendering to the Lord is mainly about trusting the Lord, knowing the Lord for yourself. When we read Romans 8, 38 and 39, it encourages us. It says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, no, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That means nothing, absolutely nothing. Not your past, not your present, not your spouse, not your coworker, not your lack of commitment. Nothing is able to separate you from the love of God. We read 2 Timothy 2, 3, and it says, when we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot disown himself. His very nature, his very character is faithful. So when we lack the faith to trust him, when we lack faith to surrender to him, he remains faithful and trustworthy. Church, listen, you can trust him. You can trust him with your family. You can trust him with your kids. You can trust him with your finances. You can trust him with your future. You can trust him with your very lives. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I hope you have people in your life, I really do, that you can trust, but your ultimate trust belongs to the Lord because he will never leave you nor forsake you. Here are three verses to help you understand what I'm talking about and just how trustworthy the Lord is. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he not speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Oh, that is our God. He is trustworthy. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant of loving devotion for a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. And the last one here is Romans 3, 3 and 4. It says, what if some did not have faith? Will their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true in every human being a liar. We can live unashamed and completely surrender to the Lord because he is trustworthy, folks. And when we lean not on our own understanding and when we submit it all to him, he will make our path straight. Are you listening? Say amen. I can't hear you, but I hope this message is encouraging you. Faith and trust don't make things easy, but they certainly do make them possible because with God, all things are possible. All things are possible for those who believe. Do you believe that he does not desire to harm you? Do you believe that God can transform you? Do you believe that he has a hope in a future for you? He does. He does. He has good, good plans for every single one of his children. Plans that were predestined before the foundation of the world. Listen, he literally knit us together in our mother's wombs. He fearfully and wonderfully made us. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. That all came straight from his word. And I pray that God gives you a hunger and a thirst for his word for him that only he 
can satisfy because that's what it takes to know the Lord. I want you to put as much commitment and effort into knowing the Lord as you do anything else, right? I want you to know his word. I want you to know it more than anything else in this world because once we align ourselves with him, with his word, with his will, everything else in our life will begin to fall into place. I've been following the Lord now for more than 15 years and I still do have things in my life that I am waiting on the Lord to transform. But listen, it's a hopeful wait because I know he can do it. Surrendering to God is the best way to live a life of abundance. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about being full of love, joy, peace, patience, grace, mercy, hope. That's what a real life of abundance looks like. Listen to what Job 11, 13 through 19 says. It says, if only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer. Get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then your face will brighten with innocence. You will be strong and free of fear. You will forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than the noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid and many will look to you for help. Praise the Lord. So let's talk a minute about some ways to surrender to the Lord. The first one is to pray. The word says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And that's Philippians 4, 6. He literally wants us to pray about everything because when we pray and share our thoughts with God, we ask him for his perspective. The next thing we have to do is we have to be honest with God. God is not afraid of our doubts. He's not afraid of our issues. So we can be open and honest with him because he knows it all anyway. Next, we must spend time in scripture. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is the lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Holy Spirit and God's wisdom can transform our minds and hearts, helping our desires to align with God's. We must be in scripture. Next, we must be mindful of God's presence. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Avoid, you must avoid getting caught up in your past mistakes or your future plans, which can prevent you from surrendering to the Lord in the here and now. Just be aware of his ever-present presence. And the next thing I want to just talk about, the last thing, is to recognize detours. We already talked about Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord has good plans for us, and he knows what they are. So we must try to see obstacles as detours that are actually guiding us in the right direction. Listen, church, surrendering to the Lord is not a one and done situation. I believe it's a daily surrender because every day we have a new opportunity to say yes to the Lord, to say yes to read in his word, to say yes to applying it to our life and to say yes to prayer and yes to making better choices that bring him glory. Yes to holding our tongue when we'd rather not. Surrendering to God takes a lifetime so don't focus on one particular event or decision or situation. Focus on right now and make the next right choice and say yes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the last thing I want to say is we surrender out of love, not out of fear. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you that you have good, good plans for us. And Lord, help us to hunger and thirst after your word, after your presence 
and that it only can be satisfied by reading your word, by spending time with you, by praying. Lord, we just thank you so much that you have our best in mind all the time, Lord. And we just give you so much glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that word encouraged you. If it did, please like and share and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you leave a comment below and let's continue this discussion. And also subscribe to my newsletter so that you never miss an encouraging word. All right, take care. I'll see you back here next Wednesday. God bless.